What's up guys? So yeah, my computer went down. I have to fix it, but I don't have the stuff to do that just yet. So I figured it now would be a good time to clean. Well, clean. Well, yeah, I guess it does need cleaned. But uh, we did the thermal paste on this thing. It's been running kind of hot. It was hitting like 80 degrees Celsius when, when gaming. And it just is throttling there because uh, the precision boost settings tell it to down clock itself when it goes past 80 degrees Celsius. So that probably needs thermal paste redone. And I think I'm going to delid my 8700K because why not? I mean, that's why I bought, when I bought this thing actually, the 9th gen stuff was act, was still out, but I went ahead and got 8th gen so I could delet it, but I never delet it, but I haven't really felt a lot of need to. I was able to hit 5 gigahertz pretty easy and still run pretty cool, but I don't know. Why not? Why not delet it? So I'll probably do that too. It's probably going to be in two different videos, but uh, I think first I'm going to go with the less risky thing and show you guys how to clean the thermal paste off of your graphics cards. Okay, so to get the cooler off, um, these cables gotta come off right here. This one has to come off. So that's three. And then we got this one right here that has to come off. And I don't think I, oh, one right there too. So all those have to come unplugged. So uh, let's do that. Um, of course, as anyone would say, I fix it kits are the way to go with any kind of teardown stuff like this. So if you don't have one, you probably should get one. That connector housing was freaking in there. It's got these two little, little divot thingies or, you know, to catch it. So I just held it with some uh, curved needle nose and pried it out with the flat tip and that worked fine. Okay. Uh, so we got those off. Now there's these screws that are holding on. Oh, it's not those, it's right here. Holding on the cooler to the board. They're on four corners. I might have to take this off. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. And yeah, we'll take the screws off. And then we take off the screws that are holding the cooler to the uh, processing unit. All those are out. Let's flip it over. Get these out. Oh, okay, there we go. No, okay, there's no more of this. Uh, there we go. So there's a cooler. A little easier than I thought I'd be. But you don't know how many times I stopped it to make sure I knew what I was doing. <laughs> All right, so dust, nasty. Let me get some stuff to clean this with. Let me clear out spots so you can see everything. something to clean this all with all right so one thing you guys need to know is when you see traces of like oil residue that's actually like right here you can okay, let me get closer right here there's residue right here that's actually bleeding off from the thermal pads didn't always know that so that's nothing to really be concerned about that's normal so about cleaning, well, not cleaning, reapplying this thermal paste. It does get applied differently than you're probably used to if you ever put on thermal paste, which I'm sure all of you have. 
Um, you don't actually put a line or dot, you kind of coat it. And the reason you do that <clears throat> is because if it doesn't fully cover, you'll run into issues because on the die, something about every corner of this thing generates heat. Whereas on a CPU, if you don't get around the edges, I guess it doesn't matter as much. So you paint them. You paint them, preferably with stuff like this. I'm using lint-free. Um, you can look up like lint-free Q-tips or whatever and it'll show it. I'm not sure what the actual name of the crap is, but they're lint-free and that's what's important. Because who wants lint in between the cooler the GP die. So, clean all this off. I you know, probably should use a smaller one. Well, oh, I already applied it, so. 99% alcohol, okay? You have to use a minimum of above 90% to do stuff like this. Oh man, those capacitors are so small. I'm not gonna be super critical and try to get all down those little crevices because that's not really going to matter. So a cool thing I can tell you about this is you see here it says A1. That means revision one. Um, no, I say revision one, but um, unless they start at AO, I know like I've seen BIOS revisions start at AO. If it starts at AO, then I guess it would be more like a revision too. But that's what it means. There's those last letters. And they say the thermal compound usually lasts for the life of the GPU. And I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe if they use good compound, but we all know they don't. Fortunately, I can't tell you guys the results of this when I before and after temp wise, because I don't have a computer to hook it up to. Well, I guess I do, but I'm not doing the damn work of that, so sorry. I'm sure it'll be better. Obviously, anytime you deal with stuff like this, be very careful of those capacitors on the side. You don't want to hit them. I can tell you there. The amount of solder on it is probably not enough to hold it on that good. Okay, so you saw that, you know, the chip that I was cleaning off. So what you saw was this side of the wafer. This is obviously a silicon wafer that they cut these chips out of. Who knows what this one is? It's like some cheap one I bought off of eBay. But the side on the other side of that wafer here is the side that actually gets soldered onto that. The side we see on the back is this. This is called the substrate. So on newer CPUs, I think 9th gen, they were actually sanding away this layer because this is like nothing. This is just kind of not really doing nothing. You know, it doesn't have anything in it. It doesn't have the transistors. They were sanding these down to make it thinner that way the side that's actually doing the work would the heat it generates would get closer to the cooler the IHS or whatever and make the heat transfer process a little bit bigger so I think what Intel did on their new series is actually make this substrate even thinner but what you're seeing sorry for the dirtiness let me wipe that down so maybe you can see it better it's all for show. You see all those individual shapes. You can see like sets of square patterns. This is where it gets cut. So those get cut out into those little rectangles that they actually solder on to, uh, yeah, do the processing. So 
that's what it is. What we're seeing is this part of the chip, which obviously theirs looks a lot shinier, but like how I would have my hands on one from NVIDIA, but fun fact. Okay, so now we are going to paint it. I use Arctic Silver MX4 because it's cheap and good. If I was going to be like a professional overclocker, I'd probably use Thermal Grizzly. But I am not one of those. So let's put a little bit on there and we'll spread her around. Well, obviously, if you use a conductive compound, you do not want to get it on those capacitors. <laughs> this is oddly relaxing. <laughs> Hey, you're doing something that could potentially ruin a $400 card. Use market value. That's how much I believe I paid for this. And well, actually, I think I bought this as a uh, full setup from a computer. The last one I bought, though, I believe I paid $400 for it. In case you didn't know why you use thermal paste, it fills the imperfections of the two surfaces where they meet. Nothing is flat, that's why people lap CPUs. Or, well I guess no, because the substrate, that would be kind of like lapping, but they also lap, you know, the main thing they lap is the cooler. You can usually apply and reapply thermal paste and see how it spread it out to see where the dips and stuff is if you were going to actually lap it. Which, you know, if you don't know what lapping is, it's where you take wet sand the surface for a long ass time until you're like Steve Burke and cuts his fingers. Okay. Right there? No, one more. I like slam that sucker under there. All right, I don't want to move this thing, so I'm going to go on ahead and screw down. Let me zoom out some. I'm going to go on ahead and screw on the cooler on the front because I have access to that right off the bat, and then I'll flip it over and then secure the cooler to the uh, GPU. Okay, and let's plug in our connectors, which is going to be annoying, I'm sure. Now, when you get done doing this and you go to test it out, obviously you need to instantly be looking at thermals to see if there's an improvement or not which you, you never know maybe there won't be an improvement i'm sure if you do this you will see an improvement to some degree because you aren't using stock thermal paste anymore but monitor it things that can happen if you don't apply the uh the paste good and you'll probably have to redo it oh i'm sweaty and we're done it's hot. <laughs> Good old Florida. It'll get you inside too. Um, yeah, that's how you do it.
Uh, you saw a very quick, easy process. This one is pretty low risk. Yeah, yeah. Unless you somehow manage to knock off one of those caps, I can't imagine anything going wrong. But uh, stay tuned where I will do the high risk one and deal with my CPU, I guess. I keep saying I guess because I really don't want to do it, but uh, it's gonna happen. It needs to happen. That's why I bought it. Oh, so the reason why you would buy an 8700K over a 9700K is mainly the huge difference is one is soldered and one is not. So one you can delight and the other one you cannot. So that's why we're gonna delit it. It's gotta happen. And I'll go through all that crap. I've done a deal before, so it's nothing I'm new to. Thanks for watching.